We have Brenty, we have two male elephants that are busy feeding away on the fire break here, so not far from where we left you guys just now when we were looking at the sunrise. So we could hear them feeding and came in. There's just this one male here and the other one is further north and not really visible anymore. He's drifted off into the thicket. And the good news is that I've just heard another lion roar and it sounds like he might still be at Twin Dams, so maybe there's another one at Twin Dams and I could hear contact calls and females roaring just south of the boundary. So I think the Styx Pride is not far and then I think one male might be at Twin Dams, so Rex is on his way there just to double check if there isn't any sign of our lion at Twin Dams itself. So hopefully one of them will settle down and we'll be able to find them a little bit later as well now this male elephant is a beautiful example he's got the most beautiful tusk for a young individual he's not a big boy at all he's probably i would say only in his 20s early early 20s he's a small bodied elephant still but his tusks are symmetrical and they've got this nice upturn to them and are big for his age those are going to be really large you can imagine when this bull elephant gets to the age of 50 how big those might be if he does get that way so there's a number of these younger bulls which have got really beautiful tusks that are starting to appear in these areas and they're known as emerging tuskers some of them this is probably a little small to be an emerging tusk at this stage but it's interesting to see that there are a lot more of these kind of bigger tusked elephants slowly but surely starting to come through the ranks in their sort of teenage years and remember that the the years of poaching and and ivory trade was in the 80s 70s 80s and so you ended up with a situation where a lot of that genetic is only going to start coming back and we're only going to start seeing the really big tuskers coming through in these newer generations so nice to have young males like this with nice big tusks around and they really are an impressive thing when you get massive sets of tusks on a elephant it really is quite amazing but gently feeding as elephants do it's perfect weather for an elephant its sun is not too bright yet and so there's a nice cool breeze blowing and so you can just sit right out in the open and shove as much in as possible and you'll find basically what he's doing is he's breaking off young trees at the moment and is stripping all of the bark off these branches and trying to expose a cambium layer that's what he's after and so you will find that he'll twist that tree a little bit and then he's going to stick it in and then basically turn it within his mouth and get rid of it he's also broken off some roots when we first found him he was busy with some roots you can see at the bottom there is a tree that he's pushed over and broken and mangled and then he was trying to expose some of the roots and I always love watching these Ellie's bulls feed they do it in the most lazy way possible you can see he's kind of holding on to that branch not actually feeding on much of it yet but he just dangles out of his mouth while he's busy with another part of it and then once he needs the, what he wants he then turns it and gets it in and eats it the way that he wants to eat it there we go so now you'll see him turning it You can actually even hear him crunching away at the bark. Nope, that's all where he wants from that particular one and down it goes again. It's amazing though that they're able to sustain such a large diet from little bits of bark. Tanya, you're wondering how far I am away from the elephant. Well, the answer to that is it's not very far away at all. This elephant is sitting right behind my shoulder. So if you see me and you can see where the elephant is, then all is very well. This elephant is in no way upset with us and in no way showing any signs of being upset. We have a situation where this elephant is feeding. As soon as it feeds like this, it then means that there is no sort of way that it's going to be upset. What they will do sometimes is they will do what's called displacement feeding, where they pretend like they're feeding and they'll grab things and put it in their mouth, but they're not actually feeding on it. Whereas this individual, you can see, is just picking up lots of different things, crunching away, eating away, and that means that he's in a perfect relaxed state. Also, if he's going to cross his legs like he's doing now, any, any danger with this particular individual he's just relaxed and he's feeding and he's not worried about us too much so we can be this close without having to worry about it we don't have to be too stressed we're very fortunate in this sabi sand system that 19 percent of our elephants are fairly relaxed individuals and will allow us these close and intimate kind of views of them you have to be obviously a little careful sometimes and you've got to watch out and sometimes there will be animals that won't allow you to get this close but for the most part here we are lucky in that we can and the elephants are fairly tolerant of us now it is gusting of wind all of a sudden this wind has come up heavily 
and this elephant you can see is turning now and sniffing us the wind is coming from my left shoulder across towards where this elephant is so our scent one will be blowing towards him so while he's comfortable with the car the scent of humans might be there and he's just a little wary of that also we know lions have been in the area and this wind is blowing from where those lions were so it's going to also be gusting a scent of lion or predator and therefore he's double checking and just scenting that wind making sure of his environment and making sure what's going on so you'll find when there's these big gusts the trunk there we go you see the trunk is just facing us and sniffing and that's because there's gusts of wind that are coming and he's working out okay what's going on right everything's fine i don't need to worry and then he can carry on feeding and doing his thing but there you see he's still smelling us and very intelligent animals and an incredible sense of smell as well Mike in Alabama, the scientific name is Loxodonta africana for a elephant. So Loxodonta basically refers to their teeth, big teeth that they've got, and then Africana is Africa, African elephant. So that's the name for these guys. And it's their Oh, what's he just noticed? Something has just sort of piqued his interest. Did you see how his head and shoulders just changed slightly he's kind of lifted his head and he almost made himself slightly bigger and then just stared around so i think there was some gust of wind that he didn't quite like or enjoy and that's why he just sort of picked up and just looked there you go you see again and the wind is properly blowing now it's getting stronger and stronger and our scent is blowing straight onto him at the moment See, and you see the difference in his body when the wind blows. He's, he's changing his posture slightly. Justin, you're wondering how many pounds an elephant can lift with his tusks. Well, it depends on the elephant and depends on the tusks. At the end of the day, some tusks are bigger, thicker, stronger than others. You, some you'll find they're going to be little thin tusks, like on a female or on a male. You'll find that some will be much bigger and thicker than even what these are. And the thicker and stronger they are, well, the thicker they are, the stronger they tend to be, and, and the more likely they can lift a bigger weight. I will tell you this, that elephants can lift serious amounts of, of um, weight. I've seen them throwing cars around before. It is it's quite astounding, actually, how they can pick up a car and just throw it. It really is ridiculous. So they, they are incredibly powerful. As to exactly how much is the upper limit, it all depends on those tusks. Because remember, some of the tusks will have little fissures in them that under pressure will start to crack and break. And we know that elephants do regularly break their tusks, particularly the males. So it's, it's, it's all relative to the particular individual. Remember also that lifting of weight is not only the tusks themselves, but it is the neck area and, and the head area of that elephant and the muscles that are in the neck that will provide the strength to lift. So generally, you know, it's dependent on the size of the bull and the size of this, the tusks as well as the muscles that will vary quite drastically between individuals. And so it's difficult to give a number as to what they would be able to lift. But I can tell you they can lift very, very heavy things. And it is quite incredible to see the power that they've got. I've seen them lifting trees that cars really battle to to pull with a tow rope so i've had once put a tow rope around a car a tree and tried to reverse it with in low range in one of these big land rovers and unfortunately that tree just did not budge whereas an elephant came along put his tusks under it and just picked it up and pushed it out the way so that gives you an idea of just how strong they can be but here's a beautiful example of a young individual he's such a nice gentle fella Stephanie, the wagging tail, no, it doesn't signify any sort of um, interest in us or anything like that. It's just wagging more from an insect point of view. So as insects buzz around his tail end and around his genital area, those that's just helping to keep them away. Although in wind like today, insects are not going to be as active as what they are. Nor basically why they have the tail is just to swat. The only time a tail really is good when it, with an elephant and to work out what's going on with an elephant is when that tail stops wagging and just points straight out off the back of the animal. So as soon as an elephant is upset his tail or her tail will go erect and it will kind of stick straight out and then you know this elephant is not happy. It's feeling like it's threatened in some way and, and is losing the plot a little bit so that's how you'll know where, with the tail of an elephant if there's something wrong when it's just wagging like this no nope, that's just normal just trying to keep flies away 
And off he goes. He's gently going to meander past us. You can see he's not even watching us really. He's just kind of going past and having... Oh, is he going to push the tree? So you see how he checks the tree? He's just making sure that there isn't a weakness that he can then push it over. So I'm just going to go back a little bit so we can see him better and see if he does push the tree that we can actually see him doing it. So I'm going to just go here. go dear watcher you're asking is the grass not good at the moment is that why he's eating the trees exactly dear watcher that's exactly right so the grass at the moment is devoid of nutrients it's been bleached by the sun it's been burnt by the sun there's very little in the way of nutrients in this grass at the moment there's a bit in the roots but there is more nutrients in the trees and in the bark and the cambium layer which is that red layer sits under the bark that takes nutrients from these roots up to the leaves and so there's more in that so that's why they're targeting trees a lot more as we start going into summer and we get rain and things start to change a little bit and the grass starts to green up and become lush then you'll find a situation that the elephant's diet changes once again and it becomes predominantly grass that they feed off in the summer months they reckon that their diet can consist of between 60 and 70 percent um, just grass and their seeds whereas now there's only probably about a 20 percent ratio of grass to the to roots and tubers and bark and and leaves so they're predominantly feeding on trees now and then as soon as the rains come it shifts a lot more to the grasses of the sabi sounds it's why they did so much damage during the drought last year is because they had no food and so they had to target trees and even trees that generally they didn't really feed that much off so they did a lot of damage and in fact if you just look around this bull elephant and you come out a little bit wider for me Senzo you'll see look at how many fallen over trees there's one there one there one there there's some over here there's over there so that's all de trees that have been pushed over by elephants in the last little bit there's as like I say in one frame at least 10 different trees that have been pushed over and so last year they did a lot of damage because they couldn't find food and even the bark of these trees was devoid of nutrients termites were onto the bark because they had no grass to eat and so the elephants actually had to push the trees over expose the roots and get to some sort of nutrients in that way it was really quite interesting to see the difference last year in their feeding pattern as opposed to this year with these sort of grasses that are around they've been able to at least stay with the grass a little bit longer right well we'll sit with our Eli bull a little longer apparently there's no sign of that male line at twin dam so i don't know where he's calling from but while we do that let's go back to taylor mccurdy who's in search of cats of her own <laughs> 